You got this. You gotta make sure you get your life together. Make sure you looking right, you talking right. Hopefully you kinda funny or they think you kinda funny. So I'm praying to the ancestors. Let me be funny, let me have rhythm, let me be on beat. Be smooth, all right? You can be smooth, you can be smooth. The Black Revolution, we gonna be all right. To say 21 and zoom is out of sight. We on high fit, so tap it. Turn on my top on, power up some phones. Meet new friends, let's get in the zone. Yeah. A defense of all black folks all across the globe. Step towards us, so you already know. Black Revolution, we train to go. The only thing standing between us and our liberation is organization. Brothers and sisters, you have a responsibility. The only way you can help your people is by helping to organize them. And the only way you can do that is by joining an organization. The time for running has come to an end. We don't want money. We don't want fame. We don't want fortune. We don't want popularity. We want power. Because of the way this society is organized because of the violence that exists on the surface everywhere. You have to expect that there are going to be such explosions. You have to expect things like that as reactions. Anytime you beg another man to set you free, you will never be free. Freedom is something that you have to do for yourself. The price of freedom is death. You cannot be talking for yourself. Because I know what's going to happen if you get caught out there by yourself. You're going to be looking for everybody else at that point. As we know, this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't gonna have it either, cause we gonna tear it up. That's what they say. Did they promise us 40 acres and a mule? Did they fulfill it? We got all we got, we got all we got. But guess what's the best thing about that? We got all we need. I'm just here to protect the people. I'm not here to cause any commotion or cause any trouble. I'm just here to protect the people. We came out here because those guys came out here trying to intimidate those girls. And they thought that they were going to have it easy. But one phone call was made and the whole, and, 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 and everybody came down here on. No bullshit. Every time you wake up, you're like, damn, how the fuck I'm going to get free? Every time I would go to sleep, damn, how the fuck I'm going to dream to get free? Niggas ain't dreaming about no bullshit. That's right. We dream about getting free out this motherfucker. Cannot be free in America or anywhere else where there is capitalism and imperialism until 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 we can get people to recognize that they themselves have to make the struggle and have to make the fight for freedom every day in the year every year until they win it thank you What's going on, y'all? I would like to officially welcome you to the 18th annual and first ever virtual African Black Coalition Conference hosted by the BSU at UC San Diego. My name is Miranda X and I am your host for this weekend and ABC's newest executive director. Our theme for this year's conference is the Black Revolution. We gonna be all right, hey. So as history and our ancestors remind us, the struggle for all African people is forever evolving and ongoing. Each of us have a critical responsibility to cultivate what the new global black revolution looks like for all of us. Now, we understand that the Rona has put a lot of things on hold, but one thing we must strategically continue to think about and act upon is how do we meet the needs of our people? Now, we have a wide range of speakers, workshops, events that is meant to arm you with the knowledge and skills to do exactly that. But hold that thought. Let me get to my new location. I'll see you shortly. As I was saying, the goal is to have fun, meet new people, but most importantly, it is our duty to gain valuable information and take it back to our communities. 
In the words of our great ancestor, Franz Fanon, each generation has its mission. We either fulfill it or we betray it. So let's continue to transform the conditions of our people. Let's continue to share our knowledge and let's continue to protect and build our communities by any means necessary. So with that being said, I know it's virtual, but let's stand for the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies Of liberty Let our rejoicing Rise high as the listening sky let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun let us march on till victory is won stony the road we trot bit of a chastening ride felt in the days where hope unborn have died yet with the steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for where our father sighed we have come over away with the tears have been watered we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from a gloomy past now that we stand at last till the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light keep us forever on a path we pray lest our feet stray from the places of god where we met thee Lest our hearts drunk from the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow only need thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Get it together, girl. You're messing up. All right. That was such a beautiful, 
beautiful rendition of the Black National Anthem. Let's give a shout out to Elrika and Johara. I definitely got to change my fit for this next performance, so give me one second. Oh, I'm liking this, I'm liking this, all right. Okay, let me change the glasses. Oh, <laughs> I like that, I'm ready. What's going on, y'all? We are live here in Inglewood, California. One of our great ancestors once said that the youth belong to the revolution. So I'm excited to be in the presence of an amazing group of young students. So without further delay, let's give a warm welcome to the Los Angeles Parmalettes. Hey, yo, there's way too much going, stuff going on in the world right now. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, God. I'm just trying to make music to impact the world, spread it all over, and make people dance and smile. No. Right. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. For real. Imagine playing revolution in front of hundreds of people around the world. Hey, 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 you want a revolution? Woo! 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 I said, do you want a revolution? Woo! Woo! Hey, y'all, that would be dope. Oh, God, that would be dope. That would be dope. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'll be up the same. Hey, yo, that's my track, dude. Tomorrow. She wants you.
Yo, did y'all hear that? Let's definitely give a round of applause to the Los Angeles Parmalettes. They did their thing. Make sure y'all follow them on social media because they did amazing. Make sure to show the youth some love. Now, for the moment some of you all have been waiting for, I wanna introduce our opening guest speaker, Dr. Ava Muhammad. Dr. Ava Muhammad is a native of Columbus, Ohio. She received her bachelor's in history from Central State University and her JD from Georgetown University Law in 1975. Dr. Ava Muhammad is the first Muslim woman in modern history, modern history, to occupy a position of authority over a mosque anywhere in the world. She served as the Nation of Islam Southern Regional Minister from 1998 until 2000. She is currently the official national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam. She has been featured several times in Essence magazine and was also recognized by Essence as one of the 30 most influential black women in America. Let's go. We are so humbled to be in the presence of greatness. She has been a pillar in our community for a long time, and we are so thankful to have her open this year's conference. So please, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Ava Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant. I greet all of you in the words of peace and our original language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, first let me express to you what an honor and privilege it is to have been chosen to open this year's African Black Coalition Conference. I am so uh, honored and I hope that what I have to share with you in these brief moments will be of value as you move through these three days. If we have a thorough knowledge of ourselves, and that means knowing our ancestry, knowing our history, and being cognizant of our experience, then knowing these things, we should not desire to be a part of the political union called the United States of America. This union of 50 individual sovereign governments whose organizing principle is white supremacy should not be a system that we want to be part of. However, what we do want, what we do demand is that we be allocated a significant portion of land right here on this 2,000 by 3,000 mile continent or part of a continent called North America that our ancestors labored to build and to make one of the most powerful and wealthiest nations on earth. So we're approaching self-determination this weekend in this conference, and that should be our way of life. And we can't do that without the ability to be free to live the values that we hold dear. The effects of this system that we live in are to corrupt any person who buys into it, as we have witnessed in recent years and months. We cannot, beloved, assign another generation of our people to a corrupt, racist, sexist, materialistic system that is inherently contemptuous toward anyone who needs help. There is open dislike in this system for babies, for the elderly, for the sick, and for those who are struggling financially. We should not desire to be integrated into such a system. If we are in our clear right mind, then we desire to go for self and set up an environment for ourselves and our offspring that is harmonious with our creator. The human being is infinite. Anything that limits human development cannot be just. 
you and I must be allowed to be ourselves in order to justify our existence in this universe. Anyone who limits our development is our enemy. The laws which govern creation operate equally on every single human being. Every single one of us is created by the will of God. Every one of us has not only a unique fingerprint or a unique voice print, but we have a unique spiritual and intellectual print and we are on this earth to fulfill a divine purpose. The laws that govern creation, as I said, operate equally on everyone. And beloved, death would be sweeter than having our children live in a system that denies us a full and complete freedom. During slavery, we were robbed of three sciences essential to an independent nation. The science of mating, the science of business, and the science of warfare. So we have a duty to reactivate, to restore, and advance in the next generation the importance of strong family units. That is the soul of the black community. The family is the means through which we survived the horrors of slavery, Jim Crow, and even what we are battling now. The importance of not only producing children, but educating them in accord with what we need as a nation. We must understand how to set up and conduct business, and we must be able to defend ourselves from attack and intrusion. The police presence and the murders by police that are unique to our community, we enable that because we are not united. And what we call the hood or the ghetto, these are really colonies. We cannot continue to be random in our choices of where we live and base our choices solely upon our individual personal comfort. Instead of running away to white communities where we are not wanted and where we don't want to be, we should make our own communities a safe and decent place to live. It is a condition of the black community, a condition created by design that provides our killers with justification for killing us. Economic deprivation leads to the destruction of the family unit, which leads to domestic violence and petty crimes and major crimes, such as drug trafficking, and that results in calls to the police. Our persistence in doing this in the face of them killing us demonstrates a lack of movement toward unity. You will remember the young woman in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, who was shot to death in her own home. It was her next door neighbor who called the police because he heard noises next door. We don't have enough of a family relationship or a bond that we're able to go next door and knock on the person's door to find out what is wrong. Underlying the unrest sweeping the United States over police brutality is a fundamental inequity in wealth, land, and power that has circumscribed black lives since slavery. The 40 acres in a mule that was promised to former enslaved Africans never came to pass. There was never a redistribution of land, never rep reparations for wealth extracted from stolen land by stolen labor. And so now it is time for us to focus on self-determination. 
We say we respect and love our ancestors. And I'm going to briefly, before I close, take you into a narrative that gives some insight into what our ancestors were thinking and feeling about their future at the end of slavery. We need a clear understanding of that phrase, 40 acres and a mule. General Sherman's march to the sea brought a massive regiment of the Union Army to the Georgia coast in December of 1864. What is not written of often in history, that accompanying that Union Army were 10 to 15,000 black people, refugees, former slaves. They were suffering from starvation, exhaustion, illness, disease, and abuse. On December 19th, they were sent to what is now Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. On January 11th of 1865, Edwin Stanton, the war secretary, and other officials met with Sherman about this refugee crisis. They decided to consult leaders from the local black community and pose the question, what do you want? for your own people. On January 12th, Sherman met with 20 black people of Savannah. Now look at this, beloved. Black people in Savannah had already started building a community and they were politically engaged in 1865. They had selected a spokesperson, Garrison Frazier, who was 67 years old at the time, a pastor of the Third African Baptist Church, and he had purchased his freedom with his wife in the late 1850s. Mr. Frazier said to Sherman, quote, the way we can best take care of ourselves is to have land and turn it and till it by our own labor. All of the black people present agreed to seek land grants for autonomous black communities. And guess what the grounds were? They said racial hatred would prevent economic advancement for them in mixed areas. This is how insightful our people with no formal education, most illiterate were in that time. So four days later, Sherman issued Field Order 15, instructing officers to settle the refugees on the sea, islands, and inland. 400,000 acres were divided into 40-acre plots. The order specifically prohibited whites from settling in the area. And by 1865 in June, there were approximately 40,000 free people settled on 435,000 acres. And though the mule was not mentioned in that order, many of our people received one that were contraband that the Union Army had. These sea islands, pro the Sea Islands Project, reflected this policy of 40 acres and a mule as the basis for post-slavery economics. The special field orders issued by Sherman were not upheld by the federal government in the years after the war. As you know, almost all of the land allocated was returned to whites. And so beginning in Louisiana at the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, there had already begun a system called wage labor that became federal and state policy. That same system dominates our lives today and has deprived us, and that system is called jobs. And so as I close, beloved, remember, let's go after the reactivation of the three sciences that were lost to us, taken from us during slavery. The science of mating, the science of business, and the science of warfare. 
There is no definition of the word science that does not include one or both of these words, knowledge and system. That's what science is. It is knowledge systemized. You are blessed to be in a position to pursue a higher education and you are blessed to be conscious and to organize and be part of a conference such as this. You are the future and we are depending on you to unite, to overcome your differences and organize a system under the set of principles that the original people of this planet follow. We are a spiritual people by nature. We are a righteous people by nature. A system is an organized collection of parts that are highly integrated to accomplish an overall goal. And so whatever our ideological or religious differences may be, they do not override what I said in the beginning of this. We have a common ancestry, a common history, and up to this very moment, we are sharing a common experience. May Allah God bless you with a safe, loving, and productive conference. I am so proud of you, and I leave you in the words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, Dr. Ava Muhammad, for that powerful opening and for reminding us that despite our differences, we all have a common purpose and that we need systems in order to organize and to change the conditions of our people. I am so thankful for you and for the Nation of Islam for all that you do and have done for black people in this country and across the globe. If anyone has any questions for Dr. Ava Muhammad, please join us on Instagram Live immediately after this segment. Other than that, if you're feeling social or tired of feeling socially isolated, join us for our virtual social hour starting at the top of the hour. Or, you know, feel free to take a break, get some food, and meet us back here later on tonight for our virtual Black Family Game Night starting at 6 p.m. PST. And remember, we're kicking off the day with the one and only Tamika D. Mowry. And you don't want to miss it. We're starting promptly at 10 a.m. PST. See you there.